next is going to be an overview of a uh, very low frequency up converter that I built. This particular device is used for up converting 1 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz input up to uh, 10.001 megahertz to 10.5 megahertz output. This is useful for extending the uh, low frequency range of a uh, communications receiver or a spectrum analyzer or other piece of RF test equipment. They uh, tend to have a very poor low frequency response. So by, de by designing a uh, quality front end, we can actually um, up convert those low frequencies up to a higher frequency that the, uh, the piece of test gear is more uh, capable of receiving and demodulating. This particular converter has a standard uh, 50 ohm input we have a 5 pole low pass filter. This is mostly designed for knocking down the AM radio broadcast band. Uh, two uh, powdered iron ferrites and uh, three uh, quality silver mica capacitors from the uh, filter itself that run directly into the RF pin of a mini circuits SR8 mixer. Uh, the SR8, SRA8 is a uh, fairly expensive mixer, but it's designed for these low frequencies. You can use a uh, much cheaper, like the SRA1 mixer, but just use the IF input for the in, for the RF input and take the uh, the, the IF output would be on the RF pin. Uh, the reason for doing that is the IF uh, pin or the IF port on the SRA1 is at the DC potential and it you want that low frequency response. Um, this is, if you connect a large external outdoor antenna, you should probably have some sort of lightning protection or static protection. Usually uh, you want a drain resistor, you know, like a 100k drain resistor and two back-to-back -back diodes to clamp any uh, spikes that might come into the uh, uh, mixer because right? you don't want to blow up the diodes on your mixer. Um, the most important part of the converter is the local oscillator. Um, I got lucky and managed to find some 10 megahertz uh, temperature compensated crystal oscillators from some old Qualcomm Omnitrax units. These are... That's an example of... Uh, I found these... I got a bunch of these uh, basically for free. They're showing up at the various... Uh, Hammer to swap fast. Um, very. Uh, you don't need to use an expensive uh, oscillator, but you do need some sort of 10 megahertz uh, local oscillator. It can you can actually just use a regular uh, square wave clock oscillator in a pinch if that's all you have. But I found some nice. Like I'm using these those nice uh, temperature compensated ones. Um, it provides uh, a normally a sine wave output, but I found some, uh, that's another optional thing, I found some 10 megahertz crystal filters. And what this does is it uh, reduces the phase noise on the output of the uh, temperature compensated crystal oscillator. So we have a very, very clean 10 megahertz local oscillator signal. These uh, crystal filters have a or 3000 ohms impedance and the uh, uh, TCXO and the mixer I have a 50 ohm impedance so I'm using a little uh, two uh, two component L matching network to con convert the 50 ohms up to 3000 ohms 3000 ohms down to 50 ohms and it feeds the local oscillator port it needs around 7 dBm um, there's a little bit of loss I think it's like around uh, about plus five I'm actually feeding it but it's still no problem. We have a little uh, standard uh, bypass and DQing circuit just to knock down any noise which might be coupled in or out of the uh, oscillator itself. On the IF output of the mixer um, we have a little 20 dB or so amplifier, IF amplifier this is a standard, uh, I took this straight from uh, experimental methods in RF design. This, you'll see this circuit used a lot. It's very very well uh, debugged and it works you know, perfect for this application. 
these this two components here, there's a stern capacitor form a diplexer. What this does is the high frequency components are essentially shunted to ground through the 330 picofarad capacitor through the 51 ohm um, resistor. So those mixed components see a 50 ohm load, whereas our low or 10 megahertz target that's essentially a high impedance and that gets sent off to the IF amplifier. We have a single, uh, another powdered iron uh, inductor that just kind of acts as a low pass filter. It's going to start rolling off any high frequency stuff prior to the IF amplifier. The IF amplifier itself is a 2N5109 with a heat sink with a fairly high, fairly high uh, uh, current so it's um, with the, and the standard uh, emitter degeneration but this, this kind of stabilizes the gain and the feedback um, helps to transform the output impedance to the input of the amplifier itself you see we have a 3D or a, it's either 3 or 6 dB I think it's a 3 dB uh, attenuator on the output so that kind of forces everything the output to 50 ohms and the feedback kind of converts that 50 ohms on the input to the IF amplifier so everything sees a 50 ohm uh, a load throughout the entire amplifier. Um, this device T1 it looks complicated but this is a, a bifiller um, turns impedance matching transformer uh, these are two individual windings on the uh, FT37-43 uh, uh, ferrite. This is, acts as an impedance matching transformer from about 200 ohms to 50 ohms. Or four, it's a 4 to 1 step, so it does uh, 200 to 50 ohms. Um, that's probably the hardest part to make of the circuit because you got to wind the, the device itself. I'll tell you how to do that later. We have the standard uh, decoupling stuff again. Here's the overview of my uh, converter itself. You can see the 10 megahertz temperature compensated crystal oscillator. Here's the 10 megahertz filter used to clean up the phase noise and the two variable inductors. You can um, peak these inductors to get a the maximum output. Uh, of the uh, 10 megahertz signal. Here's the SRA-8 SRA uh, mixer itself. Um, you notice I soldered it directly to the board. We don't want any uh, leakage or anything. Um, for the, RF, the actual RF input and the RF output, I got some nice uh, panel mount BNC connectors. So we follow our RF input not shown on the schematic, but I have a little uh, RF relay. This is just uh, switches the uh, converter in or out. That's uh, basically optional. Um, I find these RF relays from, or I salvage them actually from old, uh, usually Motorola VHF uh, two-way radios. Um, you'll often see them. They have a little diagram of the. Uh, of the uh, relay itself on the side. If you ever see those, those are those are RF relays. Very handy. I try to grab them or the circuit boards if you ever find them. Here's what the this is a SRA series mixer from many circuits. Um, on the board, I just kind of drilled the holes for the pins, and I got it connected onto the, the bottom layer of the circuit board handmade the circuit board it's not that hard but you don't want any leakage because of um, in an application like this there can't be any uh, RF leakage in or out of the mixer so obviously you get to disperse images and stuff you can see I used uh, um, T50-3 I believe they're powder iron uh, uh, ferrites on the input low pass filter these are designed for that uh, low frequency range, but in reality, um, just about any mix, low frequency mix 
uh, ferrite will work. Um, it's you know you don't need everything does need to be exact. I used some nice I found some nice uh, silver mica capacitors on the input low pass filter too because you want know, those are high Q components. So that's a very sharp roll off above uh, 500 kilohertz. Here you can see the uh, output matching transformer on the IF amplifier. Just two wires or two wires rolling side by side, and then uh, it connects to the uh, DC the collector of the transistor, and then uh, two of the wires go to the output capacitor right there. Um, there should be a heat sink on the uh, 215109. Make sure it doesn't touch anything. I have a little. Uh, there's a gap on the PC board. I, I believe, yeah, the case is at the collector potential, so you kind of want to isolate that if you can. And the input is just a uh, two banana jacks, switch, and a LED. I left. This is in a little printer case. I left one of the ports open so you can adjust the 10 megahertz uh, filter or uh, oscillator. L1 and L2 should be around uh, 25 micro -henries. I have uh, 38 turns of number 26. This is number 26. It's the green enameled wire from Radio Shack. That's what the toroids look like. You just uh, every time you wind it through the center of the toroid, it counts as a turn. So you wind 38 turns of number 26 wire gauge, number 26 gauge wire, and that should be around 25 micro -henries. Uh, like I said, this doesn't have to be exact, and you can use a different uh, core material in a pinch. L3, which is part of that little low-pass uh, filter on the IF amplifier, that's 13 turns of number 26 on the uh, T37-2 core. And T1, of course, is 10 by filler turns of number 26 on an FT3743 uh, ferrite. It's approximately 42 micro henries per winding. Here's an example of how to wind that T1 uh, impedance matching transformer. Uh, you don't have to twist the wires together as shown in this picture, just put them side by side. But you have to keep track of each wire. You notice there's a little dot next to them in the uh, schematic. Those are called phasing dots. That's just to tell you at the start of the winding. So essentially, here on this picture, you know, A, B, C, and D. Because you're going to find A, wind it through 10 times, and that's your B. Your C, in parallel again, wind it through 10 times, and that's your D. So essentially, to correspond this to that, you know, that would be A, B, and D, and that would be C. You just, uh, each of these, um, the two lines indicate that's the common core and then the two individual inductors. Here's also some uh, common low frequency stuff you can experiment with. 15.75 uh, kilohertz is the NTSC horizontal sync frequency of your TV, analog TV. 32.768 kilohertz is a common timing crystal, like in your watch. 58 kilohertz is those uh, anti-theft devices at uh, like on the near the doors by stores. Those little two things you have to walk through. They tend to operate. The older ones now, I believe, at 58 kilohertz. 455 kilohertz is a common IF output frequency of a, you know, like an AM or FM radio. And 120 kilohertz is around uh, those X10 uh, data bursts on your AC phone line or uh, 120 volt uh, power lines. That brings me up to this little device here I made. This is just an old uh, wall wart, metal wall wart that I found. 
And what this is, is a public carrier current filter for the uh, VLF converter. What this allows you to do is to plug it into an 120 volt AC uh, input. And uh, we have a polarity switch just to make sure it's, everything is a correct polarity. When uh, the hot and the neutral are correct, the uh, green neon lamp for a go indication will, will light. Um, that passes it onto a, a four pole, essentially a high pass filter set around two kilohertz. The uh, 0.01 microfarad, this has to be an AC rated capacitor. These, both of these AC rated capacitors and the 8.2 kilo, uh, kilo ohm, uh, 2 watt, like a metal uh, metal film uh, resistor, so they don't, uh, you want uh, quality components. And, uh, you can back two back to back diodes just to clamp any spikes that happen to pass through. Um, the output is an isolated BNC. What that means is the, uh, the essentially the shield is not connected to the case, just in case the you know AC were to touch this, if everything's isolated. So it's an isolated BNC connector. So I can take this BNC output or this output essentially, convert it into the uh, a VLF converter. I can plug that into a, a power line or an outlet or anywhere. You can. Uh, listen literally to any noise bursts or any sort of uh, uh, data carriers that happen to be imposed on the uh, AC power line. Um, it's called carrier current. It's uh, very common in uh, like technical surveillance sweeps. Um, a lot of bugs and stuff will hide within the uh, power line itself. And so by uh, viewing that or by listening for it and recording it, you can uh, essentially uh, test your phone lines for a uh, uh, carry current bugs. I'll show you a quick demonstration. For our receiver I'm using an AOR AR8000. I have it tuned to 10.04 megahertz right now. On the, this is the uh, RF input I have connected to my signal generator. It's outputting 40 kilohertz at negative 50 dBm with a uh, 1 kilohertz sine wave modulation. So you can uh, so the 40 kilohertz signal is coming in. 40 kilohertz in. You got the RF relay, of course it switches in when it's powered on. That's being mixed in the, the SRA, SRA8 mixer with the 10 megahertz. And then the, uh, essentially the plus signal, the 10 megahertz plus the uh, 40 kilohertz is being passed to the IF amplifier. And sent to our receiver at 10.04 megahertz. It's uh, around negative 50 dBm. We don't want to drive it too hard um, because uh, you know those mixtures um, will saturate easily and it will just create uh, in your modulation distortion products and stuff like that. Um, you could add a uh, little preamplifier ahead of the uh, on the uh, if you want to have a little. More sensitive receiver, you know, you'd add a, probably a, uh, just a little preamp after the low pass filter or whatever, but uh, there's no need to push it. That's a uh, negative 30 dBm now on the input. You can see it's nice and Nice and clean. It's 3 kilohertz modulation frequency. 300 hertz. 400 hertz. And back to 1 kilohertz. So 
So as you can see, this is a, a very handy little converter. Um, like I said, you don't have to find like fancy uh, temperature compensated crystal oscillator, but uh, um, if you're going to use this for a, connected to uh, like a piece of test equipment, like a spectrum analyzer, I'd highly recommend tracking down a quality uh, crystal oscillator, or even if you have like an external signal generator or something now, because you know. Even a cheap little signal generator would probably be more stable than a, you know, a cheap little crystal. Um. Here's another kind of overview. On the uh, the components on the uh, input low pass filter should be at right angles to each other to keep them from coupling into each other like that. But uh, it's usually uh, usually not a problem, but it's just something to watch out for. And again, the uh, um, you can actually use a st uh, standard 10 megahertz crystal like a, from an oscillator as a filter itself. You just change the input impedance. I think it's to like 500 ohms or so. So you have to change the input matching. But that, uh, you know, you just have a series of crystal to use as a filter. That would, that'd be worth uh, experimenting with a little bit if you need wanted to clean up your uh, uh, local oscillator signal. Um, because that's. There's no point in having a converter if your local oscillator signal drifts or it's full of noise because that's just going to get converted up and uh, amplified along with your signal and it just kind of just basically ruins your converter.